Fanboy Crossing presents the Word with a Nerd podcast, an interesting conversation about interesting topics with interesting people, with your host, Simon Haynes. Greetings and salutations, this is the Word with a Nerd podcast. This is your nerd, Simon Haynes, and with me is John Day Goon. <laughs> and we're going to start talking about props and costuming because it's something we both have a shared keen interest in. Yeah. This is actually um, my, probably my first international guest. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> fresh, from, fresh from Malaysia. Where fresh, you, uh, fresh on holiday. <laughs> where you work at um, Outpost Productions. Yeah. And uh, outpost.com.my, according to the card that I'm holding right now. That's the website where you can see some of the cool stuff they make. Yeah, what has been some of the cool projects you've been working on while you've been uh, there? Um, okay, some of the stuff that we've worked on is like um, the Iron Man Mark Seven armor, uh, a custom Jaeger for the company. Wow. We've recently done a Bananas in Pajamas job for Australian Network. Um, we have... Quite a lot of costumes that we send out for um, events and stuff like War Machine, Iron Patriot, uh, Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe, Cobra Commander. Um, we've just finished a Loki as well. Um, so you were up all night to get Loki? I hate you. <laughs> uh, John is also the uh, official, is it official Sony representative for Daft Punk in Perth? Yes. Me and um, James Felix. Who's another massive um, manic prop builder, and some of his foam builds are bloody brilliant. Yeah, um, so far we've been considered like the. Uh, we have sacrificed many blood people <laughs> to get blood for our foam power. You no longer feel the sting of the hot glue gun. Oh, I have many battle scars here. <laughs> Damn, I didn't realize you'd done that much in. Uh, yeah, I've got in a couple of week, uh, couple of months. Yeah, kind of. You've done, you've done that much since you've, uh, you know, stopped being a student. Jumped right in. I've seen some of your progress pictures. It's like, wow, I didn't realize you did that much. Yeah. Oh wow, that's great. I, cool. I try to post everything up on Facebook. Uh, also, was it um, re, re- ridiculous da- cosplay? I think it's probably just easy if I add that in the show notes on the, as a link. Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, how will I spell that? R e d a d e i c u l u o s. So what what started you off? Let's um let's go back in time. What started you off in the whole cosplay thing? Um, back in two thousand five, I was at this event called uh okay okay back in two thousand five, I was I was like you're a basic anime fan. I like to I like to read comics, read manga, watch anime and stuff. And this is all in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. I happen to be a fan of this magazine called Gumpak, which also means uh fun or um excitement. So kind of like your like your like a kitty magazine you'd have yeah like like K like, Zone like yeah like K Zone. Uh, so this magazine usually has like little events for signings by the artists and cartoonists. Oh wow! So uh, I found out that they were having one, and I was like, like, oh okay, I'll rock up and like get an autograph from some of my favorite artists. <laughs> and um, when I got there, there were a couple of people in costumes, and I was like, wait, this isn't Halloween. <laughs> How are they doing? And like, uh, so I found out that they were going to have an event called Comic Fiesta about eh, two months after that. So I decided to go like, okay, I'll check this event out. What is this costuming thing? Yes, you... exactly. Yeah. And I was like, I know, I'll make a costume of, um, from my favorite series, which uh, is something I still hate to admit. Back then, it was Naruto. There's a lot of fans of Naruto. I've, I've only ever seen one episode of didn't particularly thrill me, but I know a lot of people <laughs> still like it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I decided to make a costume from there and then showed up at the event and it turns out, oh my god, there's lots of people who are dressed just like me. So we had fun. I, I met, I had fun meeting other people who liked the same series I was at. Like, uh, I signed up to the forums, uh, chatted with them and made friends. And basically it all started from there. Make more costume, make more friends. Boom, boom, boom. Now I'm here. When did you start doing the insane foam building? You know, what, what prompted that? Because I mean, most possible just go, you know, learn to sew, learn to put on a, you know, like a spiky wig. And what made you interested in... Like, I've seen your Alphonse from Full Metal Jacket. Uh, Full, Full Metal, Metal Jacket. Jacket. No, that would be an interesting cosplay. <laughs> so, go with a pile. I think that's my character. Um, yeah, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist. The, um, you, you, you went from Naruto to building, like, just, just through... I'm staggered to this day just how quickly you can throw foam together. You just scratch build foam and it just comes out perfect. Well, not perfect. It's still a, it's still a skill that you need to learn and 
I'm still learning. That's like a lot of techniques I need to learn. Like, a, how do I cut proper seamless <laughs> angles? That's one thing I gotta know. But uh, yes, for um, me that's called putty afterwards. I did my first um, foam build, officially foam build, in two thousand and nine. Two thousand and nine. Was that your um, garland? Ask Lewis because I thought it was your Final Fantasy Dissidia garland. Oh, okay. That was my first full foam build. Oh wow. Yeah, one of the first full uh, foam builds in Malaysia. So yeah, that was okay. I liked it. I I managed to get into the uh, finals of the cosplay competition. Oh wow! Uh, that was alright. Have you actually tried uh, using things like Warbler yet? And I have not used War. Oh no, wait, War. Wait. Yes, so, I have used and Warbler. Warbler and all that. I have used Wonderflex, but they are not my kind of materials. Okay. I'm a foam boy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a foam boy. <laughs> Hanging with the phone, boys. Let me pour one for my phone, please. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, all the, you know, it's like not the, you know, you didn't quite seal the bottom enough with hot glue, it's just all poured out. <laughs> or you, or you, you glued on a foam handle that just broke off. Probably. Just from the weight. Not enough super glue. <laughs> <laughs> More glue! Oh, that's okay, that's cool. Because I was, I was, I must be a bit curious because I've, as much as I've known you for the past couple of years, I've not actually we've not actually really talked about a lot of what got you into the costuming scene. I mean, even I have never really talked about it that much myself. I mean, I I think for me, as much as I want to get personal on this, um, I think it was. Uh, let's actually backstep a bit from what I said. What was was because um, whenever someone says things costumes, they think Halloween. Let's let's face it. You even mentioned that yourself. So was it like? There, that thing in, in Malaysia about, like, was Halloween a big thing or was it people never see anything like that? Malaysia is a conservative country. Uh, Halloween is not a big thing. It's, well, it's starting to become a thing now where, yeah, you know. S- same over here, really, you know. Yeah. Halloween a few years ago, no one would trick or treat now. People yeah. start to do it. No, back then, if you wore a costume, you'd be looked at as a weirdo and stuff. <laughs> That's not stopped us. Yes. Uh, it's not op- it's not really open, so weird hair, weird clothes, and you'll be treated as an outcast and stuff. But okay. as a community, we stuck together and like had our events and stuff. So we hung out at events, we did photo shoots, we had fun. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say that I must admit, from what I've read of your post, yeah, that that community is very tight, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the older cosplayers from two thousand and two onwards, basically the old generation, the old they mentor the new. Yeah. Uh, we try to. Um, most of the newbies, we don't really know who they are. Mm. They come into the scene, uh, they show up events. So I'm like, I've gone to events now. I've, I'm, I've just gone back for an event. I'm like, I don't know anyone here. <laughs> I know the old hat, the old gang. Mm. It's like, hey guys, what's up? We don't. Even then, we still was. We used to do lots of IRC hangouts, talk online stuff, and we still do to some extent, but we can't really hang out as we used to back then, as when we were <laughs> students and stuff, because now we're actually working and stuff. Yeah. Like that. We still do meetup sessions, hangouts, drinking, but that's about it, really. Okay, so it's pretty much, you know, outside of the con, life goes on. Yeah, the we, con. Still, we still meet up to make costumes and stuff. That's still a really fun thing to do, but uh, not as much as we used to. So what would you say would be the, the difference between, say, like the Perth community and the Malaysian community you've been in? The Perth community is very fun, to say, to say the least. It's Probably like, not quite so tight, but at least, it's, well, I think with Perth, people ne- tend to know each other more. Yes. Um, Perth is quite a... It's relatively small community. Hmm. It's, it's very fun from what I've seen. It's, uh, you go to events, you meet up with other people, you, you interact with people in costume, you essentially are the character. It's like, <laughs> okay, example, um, I've gone to events dressed as Daft Punk hmm. with yeah. the helmets there and the suits and everything, and people oh. go, oh my god, Daft Punk! Yeah, and they start dancing around you hmm. and singing the song. And then I, I, have the, I have speakers in my costume, so they get to dance along with the song, and I dance hmm. with them. And like just seeing them happy and like dancing, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, yeah, this is fun. Well, it's yeah, like, it's like when we do Ghostbusters. Um, John is also, um, I, I would still say, officially part of the WA Ghostbusters. I'm in the WA team. You're, you're our Malaysia di- division. Yes. <laughs> but even like the Ghostbusters, I know you, you get a huge reaction over at Malaysia, don't you, for the Ghostbusters uh, gear? Surprisingly. Yeah. I mean, it's I, n- none. Funny thing is, none of the younger generation know who I am, hmm. but when the older crowd, the 50s, 40s, 40s, hmm. 50s, they go, whoa! It's a 30-year-old franchise that really hasn't had a media presence in, let's face it, nearly 25 years. No, no. And 
it's surprising still how many people just go absolutely bananas uh, to Ghostbusters. Even here, I mean, we, even when we do charity events and people are going, oh my God, Ghostbusters! Even though you haven't been involved because you've not been in country, we've both been part of PAC almost since its inception. Well, I, I was, I, well, I was there in the you, formation of PAC. You, you were there in the formation. You weren't, unfortunately, you weren't there at the, you weren't there at the pageant, which started it all, but you were there in spirit. Yeah. We were thinking about you. Well, my like, friend was there with we, his camera, and I got pictures of all of you. <laughs> you were there. My you, secret fire. We were thinking about you when we were walking around at 35 degrees at night on hot tarmac, and we're going, damn, wish Goon was here right now. Get used to it. He, he could suffer with us. Yeah. <laughs> I have tested my Ghostbusters costume in Malaysian weather, and mm. it is not fun. No. Think Perth weather, but hotter and more humid I'm by just... at least a factor of 200 <laughs> percent so you're sweating you're hot you're sticky and you've got 25 kg proton pack on your back pretty much yeah i think that's what uh, some people don't ever consider about some of these costumes is that they are uncomfortable and just like we, we did a well i say we i was just the wrangler we, you did the photo we did a photo show shoot well as we record this uh on the Sunday, it was the Saturday before, you did a Daft Punk Ghostbusters mashup. So you're there. It was a 43 degree day. So by the time we were out there at 5 p.m., it was still 37 degrees outside. You 37, were, 40 ish. You were in, in the middle of Perth. With the flights, heavy flights through time, with the well, my proton pack, which I think is a little bit heavier than your regular one. Uh, I can't remember if yours. About the same way. Yeah, and you got the bloody Daft Punk helmet on, and the, and the um, balaclava, and the gloves. You get people walking up, you're looking at you like, are you insane? And then you get the other ones like, oh my god, it's Daft Punk. And I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've had all that training. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, when it came to, um, doing... Actually, I'll go back to what I was saying before. When I got into cost, when I got into the costuming, yeah, same thing. I grew up in England, where there was no... Halloween was not a thing. And when I moved back to Perth, there was no conventions. You know, there was one kind of a couple of ones, but nobody really dressed up or anything for them. I went to San Diego, and, you know, it wasn't as probably densely packed. It was... That was the year they reached max capacity at the San Diego Convention Center. Remember last year's Oz Comic Con? There's probably, like, say, the cosplayers were very densely populated. Probably, say, like, maybe one out of every five person was a costumer. At San Diego, it was probably, like, say, one in every 50. But you still see some great costumes there. And I think that's what inspired me to, when the cons came up here, start dressing up. Because I had, it's like, a Star Trek t-shirt on that, but I thought, I'm, I'm just doing a bit pissy. And I did one costume, and I, I didn't do enough effort into it. And then I finally did my Rimmer costume, and that, for me, was the breaking point. That was the thing that went, like, I'm enjoying this. You know, that thing where you think, I'm just a bizarre old Rimmer, no one's going to get it. And all of a sudden, you get people going, oh, my God, Rimmer, give me a hug. And I think that's what hooked me for life, and that's when I started doing Ghostbusting. The one thing I like about uh, cosplay over here in Australia and, like, um, Western countries and stuff is that they're more open about your body size, your race and stuff. Because mm. um, in Asian countries, there's always the mentality of, ah, oh, you're too fat to cosplay this character. You have to be the exact shape. You have to be the exact shape and blah, blah, blah. Now, I'm not saying that all of Asia is like this. No, I've got lots of friends who do really great costumes and they're not the shape of the character and whatnot. You you have that one friend who, um, he, I'll I'll emphasize that, he dresses up like a girl very convincingly. He is literally the, not the man. That that, that photo you showed me was just like, you know, oh, this is my friend. It's like, oh, yeah, those are fake boobs. What? And I was like, nah, 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 that's a guy. What? <laughs> I got the weirdest boner right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that attitude's changing now as it's been going on? Like people it are... is starting to change very slowly. It's slightly more accepting now because we have a broader mentality, but still lots of cases. I think there was a, for a while there was probably that sort of attitude over here to a little bit as well. At least of the, the earlier cons. I think mostly because those first cons, there was less people doing it. As in like, because the, you know, the first supernova, was, I like to say, the first year you could hold both your arms out, swing them around and not touch a single soul. And I think most of the, I think I was like one of the probably dozen people there that wasn't dressed as, as an anime character. Everything else was, as I like to describe it, spiky hair and big swords. That was pretty much every other character. I, I, I'm not trying to be, you know, 
nasty or denigrating or anything like that but that's what they were you know you know they're an anime because they had spiky hair dudes and big swords and that being said I like some of the spiky hair big swords cartoons but I blame myself for introducing you to Sword Art Online (laughs) (laughs) and now there's Karitos everywhere Hmm. there's even one at ChibiCon oh that's nice so it's like yep we got that ticked off the um, spotters list um, not as bad as that was at that one uh, event you showed me where there's just like this wall of Kuritos. Oh, uh, yeah, 20 Kuritos, 30 Asunas, <laughs> one Heath. <laughs> Who did the Heath with that um, at uh, Oz Comic Con? I forget. Because he was bloody good. Yeah. I forget. <laughs> yeah. I got the photo somewhere. I'm trying. It's like, I thought you knew him. It's like, God, I can't remember who it was. I now. might know him. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> too many cosplayers. This is what we were saying in the car um, earlier. One of the things we do with Pack is we try and have social gatherings because we've done these many, so many costumes. We don't know each other outside of the costume. Like, who are you? I'm. Oh, I'm this guy. Oh, wow. Oh, you loved your costume. Yeah, you've met me five times. I have. <laughs> So I suppose that's, at least with Pack, we're trying to get to know each other outside the costumes, and that's why we're doing build days. I suppose you don't have that quite as bad, because you 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 tend to socialise more. Yeah, I try to socialise as much as possible. I I want to get to know the the newer crowd. Like, okay, I, I've gotten to know quite a few people from the newer crowd. I, I consider some of them like really, really good friends, but I want to get to know more, because... Hmm. I can see a lot of untapped potential and stuff <laughs> like I can see you are the chosen one. But um Do you ever go to someone and go, you know what, you'd be this character. You would make a perfect this character. Uh once or twice. Yeah. And yeah, um still mm-hmm. hanging out and with old friends is okay. One thing I've loved the most um about Austrian conventions is the character in character mm. uh, interaction. It's like, let's say uh, an example would be um, I was at Supernova Sydney 2013 mm. and I was Alphonse oh. in my Alphonse armor. And I had, um, I had rigged up a speaker system inside my costume that when I walked, I would have. <laughs> I use the um the uh the uh, boot boot app. Boot app, yes. It's a it's an app on for iPhone and iOS that lets you have walking sounds for your costume. It's really That's really so cool. great. I can have robot sounds, zombie sounds, dinosaur sounds even. <laughs> so yeah, I had that app running and I was walking around the con stomping like, with that and people were taking away like, Whoa, you sound like a real suit of armor and stuff. And the best part was going up to some of my friends and they were dressed as Game of Thrones characters and like a... So ah, they were dead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they were dead. No, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, soon. <laughs> uh, and, and they were like, uh, oh, uh, your, your Alphonse is really nice. I love your armor. Yes. And then uh, one of my friends runs over um, and he's like, hey, did you check out John's armor? And I'm like, wait, that's John. Takes off the helmet. Hey guys, and they're like, I hate you, <laughs> hate you. There's a great photo you took where you um, someone's got your head and you squatted underneath your armor, so you look headless. Yes, and that's so good. That, that, that's a great picture. Yeah. Oh. Also, shout out to Andy, uh, Taff, and Shane over in um in Sydney for. <laughs> Hey guys, oh. love your photos and cosplay. Be sure to set, uh, share the podcast with them. Of course. Uh... <laughs> Here's the funny thing: I'll, I reckon I'll post this podcast on your timeline, and I'll probably have a huge speed, you know, huge peak of downloads for this one particular episode. And after that, it's just going to flatline. Eric. <laughs> so, Everyone, oh, everyone, goons on the goons on the air podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. This is cool. Eh, no, I'm worried about it now. No, not the rest of that losers. <laughs> no, we do have other. We do have some other great interviews. Please download them. Please. So actually, that's probably a good. Uh, that's actually probably a good segue. What's what has been probably one of your best uh, cosplay memories? What has been? Oh, okay. So, just here's, a, here's a great cosplay memory. One of the best I've ever had. I have cosplayed as Pyramid Head from Silent Hill. Yes. Yes. The funny thing is, there was, um, as we're recording this, about three or four days ago, I, no, I think it was like the day before you, um, the day before you flew in, um, there was a huge bushfire and it was mist everywhere. And I was just so tempted to say, you should be here, you with the, your pyramid head. Oh, I hate you. No. It was, it, no the, funny thing, the... the funny thing about what he's just said is that a couple of, back in last year, uh, near the middle of last year, there were bushfires and huge fires in Sumatra and stuff, yeah. and the haze was hitting Malaysia and Singapore was really bad. The, um, was that the volcanic one as well? Uh, no, it's oh. just bushfires just from bushfires. haze and open burning and stuff. And yes, uh, Malaysia and Singapore got hit really bad. And um, someone took a picture of themselves as Pyramid Head in Singapore 
on the street at around 2 a.m. in the haze. <laughs> and that f- picture went viral. And I got a bajillion messages on my timeline saying, Why aren't you here? You should take out your permit and go around to the oh, haze. Oh, that's right. Sure. You were in Perth at the time, yes. weren't you? And ah. I was going, I heard you guys because I am not in the freaking country. Go away. <laughs> go away. Computer says no. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, okay, one of my best memories was I was wearing my pyramid head costume. We had gone up to a mountain called Gunting in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. It's located near to a very, very big casino. But this place that we had gone to was an abandoned uh, mall complex that was never finished. Oh, wow. It was, this was around 9 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. Uh, but it was very, very misty and cold, yeah. which was awesome. Uh, and so we were get around there. Um, it was me as Pyramid Head, one of my my best friends, Zend, as a as Nemesis from mm. Resident Evil, yeah. yeah. And another of my friends, uh, Yumi, as a uh, Silent Hill nurse. Oh wow! Yeah. So we were just doing a photo shoot, and we were situated under a uh, one of the old construction sites, which is all abandoned. There was mist everywhere and because the rocks around the area were uh red the mist was taint was tinted red oh so it really looked like silent hill oh wow yes it was really really good um the thing is the road leading th- through that area leads from the casino to one of the lower levels of the mountain Okay. It is a shortcut, so you get people driving past that area every now and then. <laughs> so we decided to um, stand around the area and do a photo shoot. And yeah. like uh, after a while, uh, a car would come past, and I decided to stand right next to a sign, uh, the road sign, in this heavy, heavy mist. <laughs> I'm talking about mist that is about five feet. You can't see anything within five feet of you. <laughs> so um, the best part was uh, a couple of cars came down. And I was standing there, and they slowed down. They were like, what the hell is that? There's something standing there. <laughs> and then as they got nearer, I would lurch at them, and they would speed off driving. <laughs> I was like, whoop. And, like, and they were like, oh, my God. Get the fuck out of here. They're going to kill us. <laughs> yeah. So that was really, really fun. Oh, that's brilliant. Because people thought we were filming a movie. <laughs> Does you know you do they do many um photo shoots over in Malaysia? There's one every week, really, or more than one every week. Because that's and the I don't hear too much through, about over here. The things people go through for photo shoots in Malaysia, you'd be you'd be quite shitting yourself. Really, underwater shoots, jumping into swimming pools with underwater cameras, oh, uh, bloody hell. G- going deep into the jungle, go climbing up mountains, hills. Like I've said, going into the deepest yeah. mists and stuff. Actually climbing into the old mall, which is, um, if you fell through the holes in the floor, you're dead. you'd be dead. Yeah. And there was like moss and grass and we've gone through to like haunted mansions, haunted mall complexes, haunted abandoned buildings, all kinds of weird things we've gone through for cosplay. And yeah, it is amazing. The annoying thing over here is that you hear about the abandoned places, you hear about the abandoned hospitals, you hear about the you hear about people doing going to these places, you know, for photo shoots and all sorts. But I think it's that problem is that the people that do those kind of shoots never let that they never give out that information. So there's always a thing of like I think it's also because of the legalities over here. A lot of those places are particularly chained off and boarded off, so it's it's illegal to you're trespassing in a lot of these places, and so a lot of those shoots are very discreet and covert. You know. So, but no one shares that information. Everyone knows about the uh, old abandoned pa- um, power station in Fremantle. So there's like all those great places you hear about, but nobody tells you where they are, or they're very vague. It's like, oh, it's in this suburb. And it's like, well, how am I going? You know, how am I going to be like, tr- you know, walking around the streets looking for a freaking ab- abandoned house? Funny. Another funny photo shoot thing that has happened it was um, Christmas Eve. 2011 mm-hmm. Christmas Eve 2011 uh, I was shooting my Sky High costume with a bunch of my other friends at, uh, from this anime called Tiger and Bunny uh, superheroes mm. so we were on this bridge called in this area called Putrajaya which is the central governmental hub of Malaysia <laughs> <laughs> um, on Christmas Eve oh wow and uh, this place is great for photo shoots because at night the whole place lights up in rainbow colors the entire bridge lights up so it really matched our costumes because well we were all different colors and stuff oh I think I remember some of those shots now yeah, yeah. so um the funny thing is for some reason every 
single person who was not a Christian decided to show up and hang out at the bridge and do nothing and yeah just stand there and do nothing yeah that was is that the shit you had a lot of troubles with or was that the one in Perth where you just had all these people just coming up and like hey I want to get in the photo uh, was that the one the first one you had nah not that one that was a different one yeah yeah, so like we were all trying to take our pictures, and like there were kind of, there were cars passing past us, honking. There were people like wondering what the hell is going on, and every now and then, like, almost every few minutes, you get someone like, "Are you guys filming a movie? Uh, what are you guys doing?" <laughs> and we were like, "Yes, we're filming a movie. Please go away. We're trying to do a photo here. Thank you." It's and, trying to film. and in the end, we attracted so many people on the bridge that the police came, and we and they chased everybody else away, and we got like. You have five minutes to clear out. Now. Oh my god! Grab that, grab that light stand, grab that thing, grab this costume. Oh my god, my shuriken left it on the floor. Oh! I think, I think we've had a better relationship with the cops so, you know, over here. Usually when they see the, the Ghostbusters around. It's funny, because you always get that thing of like people going, Oh, you know, you better call the cops because, oh my god, you're going to get you know busted. And, rah, 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 rah. and usually the cops are like, you know, yeah, whatever. Like, uh, you know, or like the cops see us as Ghostbusters. I think they're, yeah, you're saying about that age bracket where like, you know, they're of that age where they go, oh my God, I grew up with that. And I think that's, um, I think that's probably why, yeah, we've had no troubles with them. The cops see us and they're just like, as long as they're not causing a ruckus, we'll be good. No, because we was, that was the problem like yesterday was like, we started getting people, when we were doing Daft Punk one, we started getting people going, oh, what you doing there, mate? You're taking, in? they're staying like, you know, the, it's like they look at you, they look at the camera, they look at you, they look at the camera and think, I know where the best place to stand is, is directly between you and the camera. <laughs> And especially it's like, you know, if you're filming something, why are you just going off and going, hey, you're filming something? It was like, well, if you saying yes, you've blown the take. And like, um, they were coming up to us like, are you guys filming the new music video? <laughs> and because, well, I've gotten used to it so much that um, I've learned to like just hold up my fingers to my helmet and go, shh. Well, not really, shh, mm-hmm. just be quiet. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, okay, okay, you can't talk, okay. Mm-hmm. And then um, one of them asked like a, do you like which one, what do you like more Daft Punk or Ghostbusters oh that guy and I pulled him in close and said in a French accent du Pook <laughs> we uh Thomas Bangota and Guy Manuel <laughs> <laughs> my French accent sucks I'm sorry <laughs> but yes better than and mine and the guy was like oh I think I, they were drunk so I yes. think my French accent just purely consists of oh 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 baguette yeah pretty much oh yeah that's uh I'm, I'm I suppose because I didn't I don't know that kind of part of the music industry that well, but I'm I'm quite surprised just how much how recognizable Daft Punk is, and I think that's because I lead the sheltered life, not everyone else. Guess who just listened to his first Daft Punk album yeah, like a yeah, few yeah. months ago? Well, it's more the fact of you show you pretty much got me listening to was it the um, Random Access Memory? Yeah, and I was just like, okay, just give me the damn album. I'll listen to it in the car, and I was like, it's probably the best um, driving album I've ever heard. For just purely for drive, I've tried listening to it when I've not been driving. I didn't care for it. When I'm behind the wheel driving, best music ever. So yes, thank you very much for that. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like prostate at your uh, magnificence. Don't go into um, pop building techniques because um, when you were learning, did you um, were you self taught or did you? Uh, I grew up with Art Attack. I loved well, Art Attack. You mentioned this the other day, and I think it's something I either didn't get or it, it was, was around a, when I was I was just too old to really get it. It was a British... I think it was British? No, it was I don't know. I think British, yeah. It was a art show for kids, which involved um, like big art attacks where he would make huge pictures out of random things, like macaroni or sand or bits okay. and bobs. And he would have little projects like, oh, let's make um, a diorama or... Let's make some pictures and stuff. And his main technique that I learned was PVA glue and newspapers. Okay. And that technique carried on to how I learned to make my first props with paper mache and PVA glue and newspapers. Mm. And from there, I just taught myself how to do more techniques. Like um, back then, I used to make foam hot armor with just hot glue. That's it. Now I use foam. I use super glue, which is actually the better um, well, glue for it. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't pry apart in the heat. And those those things can get well. It's foam. It's insulation, isn't it? We well, I think we've both um, well, me small so in the last year. You probably way more experienced than me. Just standing around those hot costumes. Remember the um, Wolverine screening? I was wearing the Beast costume, and 
every single time we were near the um because this was like the what, middle of um winter middle of july yeah so it was very cold outside so whenever we were by the sliding doors leading outside i was in heaven because i was getting the draft coming through but our spidey because he was only wearing spandex and a wetsuit he was freezing his nuts off so when we moved inside he was loving it because he was in the warmth and i was just like going can you pose for me i'm like i can't move <laughs> It was dying. I had like three poses, and that's because I could barely. I was just like, going, "Oh my god, I can't do anything." I'm in this heavy, restricted, very hot suit. When I rushed out to go, in, and I didn't have my glasses on, so I like rushed out, go to the car, and I was just like, "Oh my god, cold!" I think I, I think I stood in near the car for about a good half a minute, just like in my like shorts and t-shirt, just like, going, "Ah, I embrace the cool." So, any um, any future costume pl- uh, plans you want to talk about this December? We are cancelling the apocalypse. (laughs) While also trying to exterminate the doctor. (laughs) Yeah, which, which, um, so it's a specific room, obviously. So you're doing... Cherno Alpha. Cherno Alpha. We got, uh... Gypsy Danger. Gypsy Danger and, um... Striker Eureka? Yeah. I, just, I keep wanting to say Eureka Striker. I don't know why. And hopefully maybe a couple of Jaegers. Not Jaegers, um... Can... Can... can oh, I saw it the other day. Why can't I say the damn... Drive name? suits? No, the, um... The, the bad guys. The Kaiju. Kaiju, yes. The Kaiju. Kaiju should be coming next year, I think. Mm. Yeah. Don't know. Don't want, don't want to do them in the middle of summer. No. Did, what did I say? You, you heard about Brendan, didn't you? Yeah. In Chibi Gone. Yeah. In the bloody latex suit in the middle of summer. Yeah, and um, with Brent jumping on him and he getting and him getting stuck on the costume. <laughs> it's everything right. <laughs> yeah, um, I just I just thought I don't think I've told you this story, but it's probably my um, greatest ever cosplay fail. And it's, there's a little bit of a story, so please bear with me. Um, first um, Supernova Perth, which was 2007. Sorry, sorry, 2008. My friend, my best friend Evan, he wanted to go as Tony Stark, and. So he commissioned me to do because he what he wanted he was the arc reactor under the chest and he wanted um, uh, repulsive gloves and these these did not turn out great the, the arc reactor came out pretty good and so for about a few weeks before the with, I literally found out about the supernova convention like less than a month before it happened it really was that under the radar I just happened to have saw a poster as I would never have known about it so I um I started building his stuff his I built a for his arc reactor I got a um a 10 CD um plastic disc um carrier and um glued in and soldered um 10 high powered LEDs in a circle so it, and painted the um inside of the top like um uh, with a coat little coat of paint so just to make it opaque and really pop and then I, to get up the pattern under the shirt, I used um, black electrical tape so I could get that segmented look underneath his shirt. And it came out brilliantly. I mean, it was about, it was too, way too big, but it came out really nice and the repulsor looked terrible, but that was something. So I was working, uh, after, I was working at the time. So after I'd come home from work, I'd be working on his costume for about two weeks beforehand. And then I'm like, oh shit, what am I going to do for my costume? Because I hadn't really had the time to prepare for a costume. I had nothing at that time. And so there's a Ferrari sale on, and so I got myself a blue suit. And then the morning of the con, you know, I had like long, I had, that's not the first time I grabbed my long hair, and I had a beard, so I like, you know, morning of the con, shaved the beard off, got the sideburns, went to a hairdresser's, they cut my hair, dyed it brown, and, you know, went to the 10th doctor, had the sonic screwdriver, and I actually painted my regular glasses to look more like David Tennant's. The day of the con, I am getting no, no one knows who I am. Although, I, the funny thing is, we've had, there's been plenty of David Tennant cosplayers since, and I'm like going, fuck you guys, I was the first. But, <laughs> it's all really good, I knew I was not, I just looked like a guy in a blue suit. You know, I didn't have spiky hair and a big sword, so I was just like, yeah, yeah, no one knows who I am. But my friend Ev, he was getting, everyone just loved his costume, and it was fantastic. So, of course, I was hanging out with him through the convention, and, you know, he's constantly getting photos, and everyone's like, oh my god, Tony Stark, it's literally like, literally like two months after Iron Man 3 one came out so Iron Man was you know yeah yeah Iron Man was huge and was <laughs> we got stopped by one of the security guards at uh, Supernova they're going oh the guy's like oh I love you Tony Stark and he turns to me and goes I, oh I guess you're Obadiah Stane then 
<laughs> and I'm looking at them going, do I look like I've got a bald head and a beard? And in hindsight, it's like, I should have just done an Obidiah Ob- stain. You know, I should have just shaved my fucking head off and grew a beard because nobody else knew I was freaking the doctor. <laughs> so it's like, oh God, I never lived that down with uh, Ed for that entire year because every single time I saw him, he kept calling me Obidiah stain. <laughs> it's like, prick. I think that's why I left the next year. I went, I went and did a costume, you know. I, I, it was also my 30th um, birthday. So I was like, I want to do Red Dwarf. I want to do Rimmer. I want to do this costume and I'm going to fucking make it. And I completely box stop so I got a friend to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to, you know, it's just one of those things where you went, you had that kind of bad first step so you kind of overcompensated. So I wanted to make sure that the fabric was the right fabric. It looked the same. You know, the the badge was right. Everything looked right. It didn't turn, turn out quite so great, but it was enough that people... I think it was more the fact of when they saw the H on my head, they recognized it was Rimmer, not necessarily the costume, but it was enough that I was just like, yes, I've got myself a proper costume. And I wore it the, I wore it the weekend of uh, that's the next year's uh, 2009 um, Supernova. And then the year that I was ghostbusting. That's probably the biggest fail I've ever had. You know, ever since then, I mean, if I'm doing deliberately obscure characters, then, you know, what can you do? But even with, like, four Bay, nobody thinks he's anything else. It's like, he's, he's a guy with a pot on his head. What, it, you know, he can't be anything. Even, like, Wreck-It Ralph, I don't get anyone that was mistaken me for Wreck-It Ralph, you know, as any as in anything else. So, it doesn't say, is anything ever, like, that happened to you where you're just like, going, I've put all this effort into this costume, and everyone, someone just looks at me and goes, hey, you're that character, you're like, going, huh? oh, yeah. With my first and second Daft Punk helmets, I've got tall Robocop, <laughs> astronaut, golden helmet, silver helmet, Terminator. Terminator? I don't know. Oh, I suppose if it was the silver, if it was the Thomas one. Goldfish be... head. Weird. Just, just weird. <laughs> oh, wow. So you've had it worse than me, I suppose. But at least oh, you probably... I, I have people call me so many weird things. But I suppose people still go, you know, at least using costume. <laughs> <laughs> He's not just like, a... when I first met you guys as the Ghostbusters, that was 2010? That was your, um, was it Mark VI um, guy? Mark V. Five. Five. And you had the um, belt buckle light in it. Yeah. And I think the next time I met you outside the classroom, I had no idea what you looked like. I knew I knew you were Asian because you phoned me up and like you, I could hear from the voice. My Asian. But it was one of those things like, Hello? I'm looking for an Hello, Asian. Hello, is this Shaman? Hello. I want some. I want some shitty walk. <laughs> and I'm looking. And I was in Northbridge. Which, you know, around that time was like little, little, um, China. You know, so you're like, I'm looking for an Asian guy. I'm like, why the fuck didn't Toby look, you know, come out? Because I wouldn't have recognized him. My GPS and my phone was a piece of shit. So I was completely lost. You found me and it was just like, I'm like, eh, there's someone waving. I'm like, oh, maybe that's him. <laughs> and that's actually, I think we finally first met face to face was mm. that particular day. Not and we just, wearing home. and that was, and we just went to that same ramen restaurant yesterday. Yes. Yes. First time we went there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're wearing a bloody um, yeah, Daft Punk helmet, you know, you can't see in. No. And of course, you're quiet as a mouse under that thing. Well, we have to. <laughs> Not because, like, when I, when I saw you guys as Ghostbusters, I was like, oh my god, Ghostbusters. Can I have a picture? Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen pictures since of that con where it's like, oh my god, there's, there's John. There's John. Well, it's even funny when you're like, you know, I think the worst one was, say, Oz Comic Con, where there was people there we knew, but we never saw. It's like, you know, oh yeah, where were you, where were you at Oz Comic Con? I was there. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I was there. When? Where? I was there all weekend. Well, I never saw you there. Huh? Uh, like, uh, for example, Julian, the the Iron Man. Um, we we I took a picture with him. Yeah, I know, but I never saw him the entire weekend. I would have think I would have remembered an Iron Man. I never I was saw there, him the entire I was like, weekend. Yeah, can I get a picture of your Iron Man? Yeah. Oh damn, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. then a couple of weeks later, hi, I'm Julian. I'm Iron Man. Oh what? Yeah. And who are you? I'm the man. <laughs> well, it was like um, that f- the Saturday of the Oz Comic Con. I was supposed to be giving you went in in the morning. I was going to give you a lift home, and you was um, Mass Effect uh, Commander Shepard, and I was uh, uh, Sheriff Carter. So I had my phone. It was like one of those very few rare moments where I actually had a phone able on, on my on my costume to be accessed at a moment's notice. And I'm like trying to find you in the Oz Comic Con, and I'm like ringing like nearly every hour. I was like, where the f- you know, pick up your damn phone with a fire yes, and your message and I finally meet you just out of the blue it's like yeah my phone's in the bag in the thing because I had nowhere to put it <laughs> and so it was like I think if we hadn't have had that chance meeting at the uh, con we never saw each other no or oh, at least until um 
going home time. Yeah. <laughs> and then you probably would have called me up and be like, Where are you? Where are you? I'm like, I'm already down the freeway. What the fuck are you? <laughs> no, because um, I would have, I would have hosted the ground. Are the conventions bigger or smaller than those in Malaysia? Like, say, Comic Fiesta, that seems to be a pretty huge one. It is very big. Last year's Comic Fiesta drew 40,000 people. Wow. That's, yeah. more than, um, that's more than Supernova last year. Yeah. Damn. They are very, very big, which is why it's starting to get a bit hard to move around. Mm. Um, so I've, I've had to come up with contingency plans for costumes and groups and stuff so like we gotta meet in this hall and stay in this hall do not go anywhere else until we move together as a group but you're also quite infamous for your obscenely large cardboard or board, movie board whatever uh social media props yes <laughs> as i am famously known for every year since 2011 i have done a social media costume I let's, was let's just mark them up there. So you were, Facebook, Facebook YouTube, YouTube, Tumblr, Tumblr, and what, what were you this year? I was Metal Slug. Ah, so you just did the Metal Slug. You didn't do a social media. Yeah, thing. but it's still a giant phone. Yes, it's still a giant thing. Yeah, that looked fantastic. Yes, and I went viral. <laughs> oh yeah, I, mean, I only played ten thousand likes. <laughs> and on, I'm a, I'm a nine gag. That was like the only consolation thing I got for. Uh, what? New Year's? <laughs> mm. New Year's Day. Oh, look, I'm a nine gag. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember seeing those first... I think you showed those first photos. It's just like, you know, oh, it's just a Facebook... But anyway, what? <laughs> it's just because, you know, you got the square, the window printed out. You just go... <laughs> and... <laughs> Yeah, you know, was didn't you have the status update as well at um at Com- Comic Fiesta. At Comic Fiesta, you know, rah, 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 rah. And then I had a wall that people could write on with marker pens. Oh really? Yeah. Oh god, I don't remember that. People would leave messages like hey, hey, I'm talking on a timeline. Yeah. Too much can't do Twitter. There is no profile picture for Twitter. Well there is, it's just like very tiny. Yeah, no. Nah. Unless you'd have a really, really big piece of board. Nah. <laughs> I might do Google Hangouts. <laughs> Or Skype. Oh, Jeremy, because we've been talking about like Arduinos and stuff like that. Oh, we did a course today on um, Arduinos, and we we were both talking earlier about how, oh my god, this is gonna. It's expanded our cosplay or costuming horizons because now we're like, we can add all this stuff. It's gonna cost a lot, but it's gonna add all this stuff. I just think of like Google Hangouts, how funny would it be to just get some like little monitors and like make some pre rendered uh, recording of like other people chatting on the bottom line? (laughs) Or even funnier, if you set hook it up to Skype and you have like four other people maybe like you know some of the people who can't attend coffee yesterday on Skype if I, I if I had a walking Wi-Fi connection that was unlimited then yes that would, <laughs> that would be fun oh, and also a power supply to power that for a day without dying in the ass but that would be funny just to just or even just like some little weird few videos on loop that would be pretty cool <laughs> okay thank you very much John um, no worries maybe maybe when it's not quite so stinking hot when I've had a full day out and oh. our brains have not turned to mush and maybe we'll start talking about something else maybe we'll talk about something like, I don't know, like Doctor Who or something like that something we can really immediately get into and just like oh my god did you see this oh my god Pacific Rim I could talk to you about anime which is something you don't really know much about <laughs> yeah you might be schooling me it, it, it'll probably be the entire podcast where I'm just silent <laughs> this anime, this anime, this anime. I'm just there going. What's that? You'd be like, we might need to, t- we might need to make it as a video podcast because it'll be like an hour of you talking and me just looking like, huh, uh huh. It's like, are you, are you a still image? No, I'm not in my head. Uh huh. <laughs> no, it's, thanks very much, John. Um, I'll hopefully, hopefully get you on again when you're back in the country. No worries, of course. And uh, I'll talk to you again next week. Yes. Bye. Upcoming events. This Saturday, the 18th of January, there is the Nexus Toy Fair on at the Victoria Park Leisure Life Centre. There's plenty to see and, of course, plenty to buy, whatever your tastes. A big shout-out to my friend Gary, who's got a store there. Hope you buy something really cool from him. And there's no doubt going to be plenty of people in costume to go and take photos with. I hope to see you there. Bye. This podcast is copyright Simon Haynes 2013. The intro music is by Chris Miller. For more of Chris's work, please visit www.myspace.com slash hereischrismiller. For more episodes, go to www.fanboycrossing.net. You can contact the podcast via Twitter on at wordwithanerd, or leave a message on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash wordwithanerdpodcast. This podcast is released on the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 Unported License. 
For more information, please go to creativecommons.org.au.